Clustering is a high availability technology. It makes sure that if due to a hardware problem that your SQL server is still available. So the challenge, back up a 75 gig database with a five gig of changes daily to a 100 gig drive. So SQL native backup, it will store only one day. It only does the SQL server. It's difficult to restore master and it manages only one server at a time. Replay app image can store a month of data on that same 100 gig drive. It does the OS, it does the SQL, it does all of the files that are contained on that SQL server. It's very easy to restore master and it's very easy to manage multiple servers. So replay app image, I can actually manage 100 SQL servers from the one GUI. Whereas with SQL Server native backup, I can only manage one SQL server at a particular time. Backup best practices. Backup to a network drive, not local disk. And the reason that we say backup to a network drive is because if you back up to a local disk and that local server dies, then your backup has died. So you've got to back up to a network drive or if you're intent on backing up to local disk, back up to local and then copy to a network drive. But just remember you're going to require twice the amount of storage space. Back up to a different SAN. So if I've got a production SAN, always back up to a non-production SAN. Back up flat files to tape for off-site storage. So once I've actually backed up my SQL Server data and I've got it on my different SAN drive or I've got it on my network drive, we should still be archiving that backup to tape or to a virtual tape and sending that virtual tape off-site. We don't want to be like the, the IT manager in France who ran back into a burning building to grab last night's tape backups because no tape backup was off-site. We need to look at mirroring um, the backup storage for critical data and systems. We need to make sure that we document our backup and recovery strategies. If we're not documenting our backup and recovery strategies, we will find that we will come unstuck. You know, if I'm away sick or I've fallen over and I've ruptured my ACL joint and I can't come into work and, that, and somebody needs to do a restore, they should be able to go to the document and be able to work out how to restore that particular SQL Server box. We need to test our recovery strategies frequently. One of the, th the things that I find as being a consultant out there is that most companies don't test their recovery strategies at all. And if they do, it's so infrequently that it's actually not really worth anything. So we need to be, as well as having a backup and recovery strategy, we actually need to be following through and we need to be testing our recovery strategies. And we need to make sure that our backups are secure. So if we're backing up to a network drive, we need to make sure that that network drive is secure, that only those people who are authorised to have access to those backups have, have access to those drives on that network server. So backup pitfalls, no alerting of backup failures. So many times I'll go into places and I'll say, do you realise that your backups haven't been successful for the last three months? And they'll go, no. And you'll go, well, you, you could be using SQL Mail, um, you could be using a number of different technologies to be actually alerting you that the backups actually failed. No reporting. Within SQL Server Management Studio, you actually can right-click on any database and get a report for the last 
week, last month's worth of backups for a particular database. And it'll even tell you the restores for that particular database as well. No testing of complete process. So I can restore this database, but can I restore the whole server? How long does it take me to restore the server? How long does it take me to restore the database? It's no good having a backup process in line that backs up every 15 minutes if the restore for that process is going to take four days and the company is expecting it to be up in four hours. So we need to work out that we're testing so that we know how long it's going to take to restore, how long it's going to take to back up. No documentation. If we're not documenting our backup process, then there's no, there's no redundancy in that. We become the weakest link. And the last thing that we want to be at any company is the weakest link. No knowledge of how long a restore will take. So remember, we should know how long it will take to restore that SQL Server or the SQL Server database. We should know how long it will take to recover from a corrupt master. We should know how long it should, we should take to restore the entire SQL Server if the SQL Server becomes damaged through no fault of our own. So some resources. The Appershaw website, www.appershaw.com. Take a look, their, their technology is very, very good. My blog site, sqlbloke.com. App admins, where a lot of the Appershaw staff and people like myself actually blog about the Appershaw pro products on ning.com. And SQL Pass, which is a community for SQL server professionals, which has further information about backup and recovery best practices. Um, I'd now like to welcome Naj from Appershaw and he's going to give us a demonstration on Appershaw app image and I'd like to hand it over to Naj. Thank you. No worries, Naj. So uh, I'm going to start with a demo Let's uh, replay app image. So let's go through some of the features of the product. So the first thing uh, that Replay does really well is it reduces the disk space with built-in dedupe and compression. So the idea is that the recovery points that we create that are images of the application of the SQL Server itself completely get deduped and compressed, saving you literally upwards between 50 and 90 percent of what you're currently um, uh, storing on disk. You can also recover the entire SQL Server from bare metal. It's a beautiful thing when your server goes down. So you can actually take a server, re uh, restore it to either the same hardware or to dissimilar hardware from bare metal. Additionally, uh, we leverage virtualization to automatically create standby virtual environments. And that has huge impact when you need a, either a test environment to, to work on, to test some patches, et cetera and or for, for standby purposes. So think about this. I may have a SQL server that I'm running uh, in one location. I can, spin, I, can, I can back it up with replay app image, create the image, and then we'll spin that off into a virtual machine that's literally a hot standby and an exact clone of the original server. Uh, we also eliminate the backup window, and we do that because we are a block-based solution. So we actually protect at the rate of uh, 3 to 4 gig a minute as we protect that SQL server. So we can really scale to these highly transactional SQL environments without impacting the production server. So with that, let me jump into the demo, and uh, Brian's going to join me as well. So here's the console of the, uh, of the replay app image, and this, is, this console actually is running on the replay server itself. So as you can see here, uh, on top of the screen, you have the, the volumes that are located on the replay server. And this is where you're going to uh, store the recovery points. The next pane is the alert window. Uh, this kind of tells you everything that's going on on the box. So it tells you that it just completed the validation of the recovery point. Um, everything's audited and maintained in, this, uh, in the event log. Yeah. And so those alerts, Naj, can I get them sent to my email? You sure can. So these things can be, uh, you can actually change the settings here. You can forward them anywhere you need to, uh, to the whole admin team or whatever is appropriate. Uh, 
That, that's great news. Uh, and additionally, uh, you can, if you're running MOM or some third-party event alerting tool, this integrates beautifully with that as well. And, and most environments that are uh, uh, Microsoft shops are running MOM nowadays, so, oh, yeah. so that's great for the, the management team. Yeah.